Welcome, everyone. I am your pastor, Ivy Rivera. I'm a psychic medium, a Taino airwalk, and this is Roots Revival Interfaith, where we believe in the three truths in the universe. That is intuitive intelligence, astrology, and numerology. If you follow these three truths, they will lead you to a, a place of awakening and enlightenment. They will help you to heal and grow, to fulfill your life contract and purpose, and like we're talking about tonight, to be dealing with the people you're supposed to be having as friends in your life, but ultimately to be able to take that wisdom and to give it out to others, to raise the vibration okay, in the world, in the universe, with the community. So uh, if you want to check out any other Roots Revival interfaith uh, sermons, you can listen anywhere that there are podcasts and here on YouTube under the Roots Revival playlist, you can go back and listen to old sermons. So tonight we are talking about how to make friends based on the spiritual laws. So I don't appreciate the different social psychology attempts at training people up on how to make friends. Every time I see a post on it, I watch a video on it. I see people struggling with it. I feel terrible about it. I just watch and I think, my God, there are so many gaps. There are so many holes and they clearly don't know what they're talking about. So they're just acting like that's not a problem. Like we'll just smooth over those giant potholes, you know, and um, assume, you know, they won't come back and they always do. And what I mean by that is that if you are using these social psychology principles or even a lot of the airy fairy nonsense that a bunch of pseudo light workers have been pumping out in recent years about making friends. What happens is if it does work, it does not last. And what I want to talk about here today are the different laws of the universe that you can utilize to make sure that you're attracting the right people and that these relationships have a shot at lasting. Everybody has free will. I can't give you 100% guarantee. You know, people are are shifty. People change a lot. We never know if someone's going to continue to take good care of themselves necessarily. You know, that can affect relationships, but at least it has a shot at growing. Also, I notice there's no discernment involved. So when I listen to these, you know, social theories on how to make friends, I don't hear anybody giving warnings you know, talking about how many narcissists and predators there are out there, um, talking about the fact that so many of us have been through betrayal trauma and we can't just ignore that and be like, I'm going to go to a dance class and make new friends. It just doesn't work that way. We have to look at the discernment aspect of all of this. Okay. Uh, also, before we get into it, uh, you guys are on all different platforms. Please give this video a thumbs up. Donations are appreciated. Drop a comment of any kind. Please start posting your prayer and healing requests. I do get to each and every one, even if you're watching this video uh, through a um, recording later on, drop your prayer and healing requests in the comments. And I am taking questions, like always, we're an interactive church. So at the end, I'll be um, taking all of your questions, but you're going to have to post it here on YouTube at Ask Ivy, okay, or on one of the Facebooks. That's the only way I'm going to see it. And if someone wants to volunteer to move them over here for me, feel free. Greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for the hearts on TikTok. All right. So um, what do most of the uh, social experiments suggest, the spiritual, how to make friend, you know, gurus and all of this supposed uh, social psychology leadership, what do they suggest you do to make new friends? Well, um, just from one of the posts I saw here today cross my feed, it said, join adult activities. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a given. Join the gym. Okay. All right. That's a little weird, but okay, maybe. Uh, join a sport. Okay. Isn't that kind of like joining the gym? I, I feel like already we're kind of all talking about all the same things, right? Join a spiritual group. And I'm like, wow, that is a major red flag because a lot of people are into dark arts. 
it's it's a mess, okay? And then it was like three or four more things of the same variety. So clearly nothing. And that was put out by, I think like, I don't know, the Red Cross or something weird. It was like, it was some medical, uh, you know, platform. So um, let's get into it, okay? How can you actually make friends? Why may it be a difficult process for you? And how can we use our discernment to make sure uh, that we're attracting the right people and these friendships actually last. So um, I want to start by explaining that I am a psychic medium. I'm constantly working with uh, the public and I'm watching a lot of shifts in people's development. I am happy to see these shifts, even if it means that a lot of people are going dark. They are choosing uh, low vibration and they are exposing themselves for what they really are, you know, toxic. I'm happy with that because that helps the other people who are ready, like all of my viewers here, um, who are ready to evolve and get more wholesome, stable, successful relationships. It helps them to see clearly who and what they've been dealing with and to hopefully find the strength to leave that behind to make room for the new. Now, this has been rapidly increasing since around 2016, 2017. I saw a peak again at 2019. And I've been talking about this for years, that we're going to see an increase in that divide due to self-development or lack thereof. Okay. And it is affecting our family dynamics and all relationships, marriages and whatnot, but especially those of us who had friends, long-term friends, we're finding that we're no longer on the same page and it can really be devastating. So I um, have always examined friendship dynamics in my own life because I found it interesting to see myself be successful in an area when I was struggling in a lot of areas growing up. Um, through my adulthood also, and still today, you know, I have a lot of areas that I struggle in. I'm neurodivergent. I'm a psychic medium. You know, I have a lot of stuff going. I have a lot of childhood trauma. I have every reason under the sun uh, to be, you know, struggling and incapable of getting past, you know, some of these barriers. However, you know, I always had good luck in this area. So as a kid, I was moved from an environment that was, uh, had a lot of cultural diversity, um, you know, a lot of race, racial diversity. You know, we were, a lot of us, uh, when I was a kid, a lot of us were poor. Um, I was moved out of that inclusive environment into a white, rich um you know, dominated environment. I was brown. I was curly haired. I was poor. I was constantly attacked. I thought, my God, I'm not going to survive in this environment. It was horrible. However, I did. I did survive. I thrived. I did better than a lot of the people, okay, who had everything handed to them on a silver platter. And I examined that through middle school and the couple years of high school that I did attend. It was all in the same environment and it was brutal. But what helped me was a willingness to authentically be myself, to humble myself, uh, to be there for people when they needed a friend, people from all groups. You know, back in the 90s, I mean, it was a bit like you had the nerds, you had your dorks, you had your art students, you know, you had your cheerleaders, you had your football players, you had, you had, a, you know, everybody and, and everybody was so clicky. I don't know how it is today, you know, but everyone had their group and everyone stayed within their group. I never did that. I bounced everywhere. And I had friends from um, also, you know, the real outcast groups. So if the, it was the kid who would be eating alone or no one would let them sit on the bus, you know, I was the friend. I was the one. It was like, you could sit here. I'll sit with you, bring them to the table, whatever, whatever, you know, hang out on the weekends. Sometimes even um, I learned how to give love instead of just looking for how I could receive love or receive attention, you know, receive affection. So I think the first law here that I learned young was how can you 
have an attitude of gratitude and be kind and be a friend um, instead of having really judgmental expectations and, you know, getting um, more focused on who we should exclude and what you want to keep out. You know, how can we be more inclusive? And so uh, that worked for me. I also think that, you know, moving to New York City was a big deal for me as well. So when I moved to um, New York City, I had been out on the streets at like 13, 14 years old, I was living out on the streets and I was basically homeless for like six years. So I learned how to bounce all over the country and even a little bit of Canada. And I learned how to work with people, um, how to give, even when I had very little to give, um, I was fortunate enough to receive and I survived those situations. Um, I learned how to make friends with anyone and everyone, you know, from the homeless uh, to people who were higher up in jobs, I, you know, I was able to get for short periods of time. I learned how to expand what I had learned being an outcast in middle and high school, you know, to the streets of America. And it's not easy here. I'm not saying it's easy anywhere. Okay. These are tough streets. And, um, you know, then I moved to New York. And when I moved to New York, the very first night I was there, um, I was invited to a party. And I remember coming back to, uh, my siblings Manhattan apartment. I was living in Queens and she found out I was invited to a party. And she said, I have been living here for six years and I have never been invited to anything and I cannot make friends. How did you get invited to a party? And it, and I was like, how did I get invited to that party? I simply paid attention to the laws of the universe, what works, what uh, keeps me in the flow of talking to people. I was dealing with like-minded people. I wasn't wasting my energy talking to everyone off the streets. I was focusing in on people who had similar goals and beliefs. And we were able straight out of the gate to have some deeper conversations. And I didn't even think anything of it. I thought, doesn't everybody get invited to parties the first night in New York? You know, there are so many people here. How could you not? No, that doesn't happen. You know, so there are different things that I noticed um, growing up and moving into adulthood uh, that were working in all different types of circumstances. Then I left New York City and I moved to Buffalo, New York, which was a social desert. I had never in my life experienced such social deprivation. I actually did research on it to figure out what the heck was wrong. Why aren't people looking to make new friends? Um, you know, what is the suspicion here? Why is there so much bottom feeder energy of people taking advantage, you know, instead of just like being cool and open um, to new relationships? Why is it so dog eat dog? Uh, and I found out that there were a couple things going on in that area. One being that there was the lowest population my age group since World War II. So I was already working with a small pool. On top of that, it's a family town. Well, I lived in family towns, but never to this extent and never for an extended period of time like I did there. In family towns, these people tend to be 100% unwilling to bring in outsiders. They tend to stick with their family. They stick with their elementary school friends or their high school friends. They do not expand out, okay? Another issue was that anyone who was coming into the area uh, who were like entrepreneurs or they were graduates, they were there for high school, you know, they were trying to get their careers off, they would not stay because they also weren't able to feel at home and make new friends. So everybody left. Everybody who did come in my age range would get the heck out of there as quickly as they could, you know. So I got stuck in an area for a long time that was extremely dissatisfying socially. And it seemed as though none of my tricks were working. You know, none of the tools that had been working for me all over the country um, were bringing in the kind of people that I would consider safe or, you know, they were just really, 
I want to say on a very different level than what I was. They were very close minded. It was extremely difficult for me to really feel that I was making any connections at all. And this went on for years. And one day I realized I'm going to have to create my own community. And that's what I did. And now we have Roots Revival. We have Ivy League Psychic Academy. Okay. We have uh, Ivy Ceiling Call Center. We have a million different things going on. All of that in part stemming from my desire to create a community that matched what I was, um, my own self. Okay. Okay. And so sometimes you just have to do that. But anyways, that's my background personally in a lot of this. And I have been through the gauntlet, okay. Um, of trying to figure out what works and why those things work and especially, you know, what doesn't work. Um, so I would encourage you guys, if you find yourself in a situation, you know, where you're not surrounded by the like-minded, you know, also don't be afraid to move. I moved about constantly and, um, sometimes it is an atmospheric problem and you're going to have to look more online. Okay. We're going to break that down here. So one of the things that, um, you know, we want to do to make new friends this could also be for some of you, maybe you're tuning in because you want to sort of renew your friendships a bit, or you want to make sure that your friendships last. The things we're going to talk about here today apply, okay, to all of those. So number one, you need to remove the blocks first. I talk about this all the time, and I talk about this, you know, in regards to anything new you're trying to do in your life. You have to do block removal first. So a lot of the issues I see with my clients, uh, especially, you know, with, with my own self, with my students, I have seen that they will not let go of shitty people. So if you have people in your life who are taking advantage of you, if these are dead friendships, but you don't want to let them go, if it's disappointing, you know, there's no healthy balanced, whatever, whatever it is, but you don't want to let go of your friends your friends. You don't want to let go of these people because you're not sure you can replace them. And you're like, well, I don't want to get lonelier than I already feel. I assure you, you are feeling far lonelier being in relationships that are dysfunctional, outdated, or downright toxic than you would ever be alone for a spell while you regroup and get out there and make new friends. I assure you, this is worse, okay? So a lot of people don't want to do block removal on this because, again, they don't want to lose what little they think they have. So you have to be willing to say, every time the bus stops, somebody's got to get off. In order for a new door to open, another door has to close. You have to let go of the relationships that are not working. Essentially, what you're doing in this is you're telling the universe that you are ready for the new, Okay, you're owning it and you're ready. Another reason I see a lot of people struggle in making friends is because they don't want to do the shadow work on themselves. Okay, and this boys, men tuning in, you have this men's loneliness epidemic. Okay, and I'm not air quoting saying it's not a real thing. It's a real thing, but this is why it's a real thing. You won't go to therapy. You're not doing the shadow work. You're not doing the self-healing. You're not working on yourself. You're not developing yourself. And so you're not friend worthy. You have to do these things in order to bring balance to a friendship. So if you find that you're the type of person who is dodging, you know, therapy, self-healing, um, you're going to want to get really serious about using that for block removal. Thank you for the hearts on TikTok. Um, I would also say that if you have any type of a disorder, get to know your disorder. If you're neurodivergent, for example, you're going to be very different socially than a neurotypical. Okay. If you have something like schizophrenia, I love schizophrenics. I enjoy, I've had some of my best relationships, romantic and friendships. Um, with schizophrenics, um, because they're very similar to psychic me the psychic medium ship brain. Uh, but you know, when you're 
uh, schizophrenic or if you have severe bipolar, or if you have, you know, just a lot of other things, um, you know, when you're going through episodes, it could be tough for you. So you really have to get in touch and you have to bring that into your friendships. I would say relatively early on, um, you know, try to stay with your treatments. Okay. The best that you can. Um, but I think that you shouldn't rule yourself out as being a good friend. Okay. People are becoming more and more aware of um, the similarities that we all have to those types of disorders. So don't rule it out. Make room, okay, for uh, your disorders here. If you are, people, okay, codependent, if you have dysfunctional attachment styles, if you have a lot of childhood trauma, this is going to come up in your friendships and you really need to be dealing not with all of it. It doesn't need to be done and dealt with. It's never going to be healing is not linear. It's not from A to B. Okay. It's cyclical, but you do have to be working on it. Okay. You can't, you can't be getting triggered all the time with your friends. Your friends are going to get tired, especially if they don't have those types of traumas, those issues, codependency being the biggest one. Don't put that on your friends. Okay. If you're codependent, Get some therapy for it. Remove that block. I would also say that those of you dealing with school trauma, um, school trauma is brutal. And you can feel it creep up on you even into adulthood from a mile away. And whether that person approaching you was a bully or they hung out with bullies, right? Or they have just a stank attitude about things, whatever it is. You know, you're going to easily get triggered by whatever happened to you when you were at school, especially if it was a lunchroom issue, because in the lunchroom, whether it was eating alone or the threat of exclusion and having to eat alone or being, you know, bullied. Um, There's a lot of mean girls activity I saw when I when I, you know, honestly, at all the schools I went to, I saw everywhere. Um, very, very brutal um, threats of exclusion that would surface in the lunchroom, in the cafeteria, right? And that affects your relationship with food. That affects a lot of different things. We don't have time to get into all that today, but deal with the therapy, the self-healing that you need from childhood trauma, from the school, academic, and lunchroom environments, those toxic social environments, you know, that foster bullying um, and see how it affects you today. It's a hard thing to look at and it may be more trigger triggering than you realize, you know, so if you can throw some money at the problem and get a therapist while you do it, or at least plan ahead when you're going to be examining it, take some time off and time for yourself and join groups of other people who are dealing with it. Um, betrayal trauma also. Okay. So you want to, be mindful of how friends in the past have betrayed you. And I would highly recommend you don't take back friends who betrayed you in the past. Okay. I made the stupid mistake of allowing someone in a couple years ago who was like up my rear end trying to get back into my life. And, um, you know, I was like, well, I mean, we were like 14 when she did me dirty, you know, people grow, people change, whatever. Um, let her in. She did the same thing again. And we are, I am 45. Okay. I am, I wouldn't even bother. There are so many fish in the sea. Okay. There are literally so many people, um, out there that you can make solid friendships with. And my grandfather always used to say, you know, if you have one friend, a true friend, that's worth more than gold. So don't think that there's, you know, quality and quantity. If you can make just even two, three friends, this is, amazing. This is great. Okay. And it can happen. It can happen for all of us, you know? So, um, don't, don't lower your standards to take back people from the past, you know, send them, wish them well and leave them where they belong behind closed doors behind you. I would say, uh, we also, um, want to talk about, you know, in removing the blocks, one of the things that you guys can look at 
is life contract fulfillment. Your life contract is what you signed on to before you came to earth. Plug, plug. If you need to book a life contract reading with me, it's up on the website. Okay. Ivy Rivera, psychic medium.com. You could also see a good astrologer, Vedic or Western astrology, as well as your numerology chart. You're going to learn more about your life contract. That's what you came here to do. If you're not fulfilling your life contract, you're off path. And when you're off path, you're anxious, you're avoidant, Typically, uh, you could have a lack of fulfillment in your life. There's a lot of depressive stuff that comes along with this. And it's, of course, going to affect your relationships because the vibe, the energy that you put out is that dissatisfaction with your own life and self. So if you are fulfilling your life contract, you are automatically going to be able to manifest the right people toward you. That is a given. Okay. And this sort of leads me into the next thing with block removal. Um, you know, you may not be able to manifest. A lot of people are frustrated with their relationships across the board. A lot of my clients and, um, so much so I started offering love and relationship readings, um, separately from psychic mediumship this past year. And it just blows up on a daily basis. So many people are dissatisfied with all of their relationships because they're not manifesting the type of relationships that they want. And they can't figure out why. Here's the golden rule. Manifestation is only going to work for you if you are in alignment with your life contract. And if you are trying to work with the people you have business working with, you can't just make up some you know, crazy unicorn fairy tale idealistic storyline and say, well, I deserve that because I want it and I'm going to push and push and push and manifest. That's not even how you do it. Okay. Manifestation is something that when it is available to you because it is in alignment with you and the work that you're holding yourself accountable for, you're taking responsibility for your part of the work, then you can go ahead and you can claim it. Right. So get that done. Work on yourself. And that leads me into this next one, which is triggering law of attraction. And what is in motion stays in motion. So when you've removed the blocks, you are creating flow. You're creating fluidity. And now things can start to come and cross your path. Now it's just your job to claim them and then to take good care of those new friendships. Um, but what is really happening here is that your ability to start manifesting is allowing for you to attract more of the same. So like attracts like you are no longer attracting toxic low level or random people to you. You're attracting higher vibrational people who match your energy and what is in motion stays in motion. So just keep it going. All right. Honorable mention here. Um, this isn't really about block removal, but I wanted to fit it in here because it doesn't fit in anywhere else with today's um, sermon topic. I just want to also mention effort and responsibility. And again, men, boys watching this, this is a big problem with you guys. And this is one of the root causes of the men's loneliness epidemic. This is why you don't know how to be good friends. It's because you're not taking responsibility. You're not holding yourself accountable in your friendships. And you're not putting in any effort. So you tend to do this in all of your relationships. And I'm not saying women don't do this, but women are programmed from birth. We are brainwashed into paying more attention to everyone else, less of ourselves. We're It's like a sin for us to center ourselves. We are so community oriented that we naturally gravitate toward, even when we want to break the habit of others, taking care of others, listening to others and building relationships and community. So we're superstars at it. And that's really working in our favor, you know, right about now, um, as we see a lot of changes in the world. Okay. And the new revolution and things like this. Um, but for those of you who struggle to put effort into your friendships, um, you're going to really find that they don't last because eventually people are going to get sick of you. Okay. People don't want you in their life. If you are only centering yourself at all times to a point of being selfish, um, 
you know, you're not ever concerned with how they're doing. You're not ever joining in on activities that maybe they also, they enjoy, you know, if it's all one-sided, it's not going to last. It may get up off the ground, but it will crash shortly after. All right. So, um, also the universe does not reward a selfish attitude. So when you are looking at other people and you're saying, it's all about me, 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 and I want them to chase me, and I don't really care about them, um, the universe is going to be like, okay, well, then you don't deserve anybody, okay? And that's it. Uh, no one of real value may cross your path. And those that do, it's going to be a karmic lesson. It's going to kick you in the butt, okay? They're going to be there to show you what you lost out on. So make sure you step up. And um, you put effort into your relationships and you take responsibility in your relationships for when you fail, you hurt someone, you need to do more growing. Don't forget that relationships are where we do the majority of our growth. And a lot of people just want to be in seclusion and be like, I can grow. I have YouTube. I have a therapist. I'm living my best life here alone. You know, yeah, but also there's universal law. Okay. And it really is through working with others that we are going to grow the most. So stay open to it. All right. Number two, instead of going out into the world, like social psychology is pushing and trying to navigate your way into different situations to meet new people and to make new friends, let spirit send the right people to you. You can really take a more lackadaisical attitude with this than you may think or that we've been told. I have found that if I sit back and do nothing, I just show up for my life every day. I show up for my community every day. I do what I'm here to do and I abide by my life contract. The right people are going to keep crossing my path. And all I do is engage with them and stay open to that maybe evolving into a greater friendship. And I feed it. And it works. Okay. So it's really not that complicated. And I'm not saying don't get out there. We're going to get into that. Okay. There are some things you need to do, but for the most part, your soul tribe, your soul mates, okay. Or your, even your karmic partners are going to cross your path. And all you have to do is learn the difference between those, those three, Karmic partners are going to potentially be tough learning lessons. Be careful there. Soulmates are a work contract and they can be lifelong and fairly intense partnerships. Not necessarily romantic. Some of them are. And um, members of your soul tribe are people you're meant to be friends with. Sometimes maybe just on an acquaintance level, but they are also about teamwork, okay? A work contract, building, building you up, you build them up, you work collectively on things. They show up in your dreams a lot. I would say most of the people showing up in your dreams are not like your deceased loved ones and your guides and this and that. It's usually members of your soul tribe. And um, you work together in other dimensions on different tasks. You've been together in your past lives. You will be together in your future lives, okay? So there's a lot happening there. So just sit back and kind of relax, okay? Take, take a deep breath. I'm sure everyone's happy to hear this one because it is a lot of work to make new friends. Maybe you're working a little too hard. Pay attention to who and what is in front of you, okay? And that leads me into number three. Don't dismiss or neglect them. So what a lot of people do, I, I'm going to go back to the example of moving from New York City where I was invited to a party the very first night I was there to being in Buffalo, New York, where I was there for like five years and it was like I had the plague, okay? And, uh, you have to understand that sometimes you are in an environment or maybe even you yourself have learned how to be like, I need a BFF. Who is my BFF? That is so incredibly immature. Okay. Super lame. We're not in the seventh grade anymore. Um, if you have a way of thinking about people being your closest, they know everything about me. I know everything about them. I can go to them with anything. You're pushing it. 
All right. You're really pushing it. You need to be willing to accept people into your life who are acquaintances, who are maybe co-workers, who are people you get to have meaningful exchanges with in public from time to time. These could also be online relationships or friendships. These could just be, I mean, I have some people on my social media, when they show up in my comment section, it makes my day. You know, I, I am like, I've never even met them, but the way, uh, this, this person and I exchange love and affection and support for each other. And we have such similar ethical codes of conduct and moral compasses. It just lightens my day, you know? So there are a million ways to, um, have friends and you don't want to be so strict on the way you think of it in these sort of childlike mentalities that have been reinforced by societal standards. You know, you got your family and blood is thicker than water and you've got your friends and, you know, one is silver and the other's gold. They used to train us that in brownies. Never let go of your old friends. Sometimes you do need to ditch your old friends and make some new ones. You know, um, they're only gold if they're gold. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not a given. Um, you know, we need to let go of those old ideas. And so don't be too strict on what you, what you think about what a friendship is evolve beyond that. Okay. And you may want to make a list about this. Here's what I think a friendship is. And here's, you know, what maybe it truly is, or I can allow into my life. These are new ideas and concepts. So don't dismiss or neglect the friends that are there for you, but they're not meeting your standards because your standards are unrealistic. Um, I would also say that uh, you need to, with things like um, your online friendships and relationships and your maybe coworkers, okay, your acquaintances, um, you want to deliberately engage with these people. If there's someone whose vibe you like, you want to allow yourself to take those moments when you are talking and just feed it. Just build off of that more, um, especially if there's a moment when you can be an active listener to them, you can be a support. You don't know sometimes how important your casual friendship is to someone. That saves lives. Sometimes somebody can't go to close family or other friends. You know, maybe there is stuff they're hiding from everyone else. And you may be the one because of this casual exchange, you know, you're having a, an uplifting moment or timing is right. You know, and the universe puts you together at just the right time through synchronicity, always with, with the right people. So um, deliberately engage, be an active listener, allow for deep conversations. And what am I really talking about with all of this? Deeper levels of intimacy, okay? Or higher levels of intimacy. And once you reach those higher levels of intimacy and you feel that connection with the other person, they're going to seek you out naturally. All right. So we have a chance um, at this maybe getting offline, you know, or becoming something more. Um, I wouldn't rule out flirting and dating either. So I, you know, I have found that the dating apps, I haven't been on there in a long time because I'm in 4B right now. Um, but I did find that on the dating apps back when I was on them, um, they had an option to like put in your profile, I'm looking to make new friends. And I was like, this is brilliant because half the people on there are just looking to make new friends. Okay. Anyways, um, ladies, if you, if you are on dating apps, you know, half the guys who are trauma dumping on you are just desperate to have friendships. You know what I mean? Um, which isn't appropriate for the dating section. Of course they haven't earned that, but, um, you know, should they be under the friends section? I don't, I don't know if they're just not clicking on that button or what's wrong. Again, there is a lot of guilt and shame involved in not having friends, but, um, you know, you may, you may be able, uh, to through the dating apps, you know, meet a significant amount of people or, um, even flirting or dating in itself. I have made some lifelong friends, where we were just sort of, you know, dating in the beginning. And then it was like, yeah, it's not really going to work. But like, my God, this friendship is uh, hilarious. 
And it always comes back around, even if we do take a break. And like, there's a lot of emotional support for each other, you know? So there are many, many layers to this. Again, be careful categorizing and don't rule them out. Okay. Um, also, I don't like how people talk about this. This irritates me. A lot of people talk about how online, the world, social media, you know, the is dividing us. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. You're using it wrong. If that's happening for you, you either have an agenda, you're making money off that, you know, or you're using it wrong. And people will say, well, if you can't meet someone organically, who cares if you're meeting them organically? You don't need that. Um, and people say the same thing with dating. Well, if I can't meet them organically, if they're trash on a dating app, it's going to be trash when you meet them organically. It does not matter. Okay. You don't need to necessarily be face to face with people. Okay. Um, eventually that's always nice. All right. And you can move it toward that often. So let's talk about number four, know your value. Do not hang out with people that don't appreciate you. Know what you're good at. Know whether you're funny or you're a really great listener or your life is super interesting, or you can hold a really great conversation and bounce around from topic to topic. If you're there for people, if you're loyal, you know, know what you bring to the table. And knowing your value will help you enter into relationships um, where you carry a more confident but humble energy. Okay. And that is safe. People, the right people, just want to feel safe. Um, make a list of what you're improving about yourself, okay? You can make a list of um, what's really great about you in relationships. You could also make a list of what's not so great and you're working on it. You can make a manifestation list. I thank you for the hearts on TikTok. I tell everybody uh, who's looking for a love partner, write down 15 things on a piece of paper, put it in an envelope, put it away. Um, and check it in six months and see if that person hasn't appeared yet, you know, um, but make a manifestation list of all positives, what you want to attract to you in friendships. Don't put anything on there. Like, I don't want anyone, you know, like my old friend who, you know, screwed me over in high school and slept with my boyfriend. None of that. None of that. Okay. We're not going negative. We're going, we're going all high vibration, all positives. I want someone who checks in with me too. I want someone or I want to attract people who have the same um, morals that I have, the same goals, okay, whatever it is, and never settle. Do not settle. You are better off alone than settling, okay, because eventually you're going to have to get out of it anyways. If you get yourself in, in relationships that don't mean anything, eventually you're going to have to leave and then it's super awkward. Why even bother? Okay. Number five, use discernment. Karma is contagious. I talk about this all the time. It's like gum on the bottom of your shoe. Don't be getting in bed with a bunch of other people who have serious problems in their life that they're not working on or that are going to negatively affect you in some way. Be careful. Karma is contagious. Okay, use your discernment. Your gut never lies. If you get a bad feeling about someone, run. You don't need proof. If everyone else at the new dance class that you joined just to make friends loves and adores, right, this, this one person over here and thinks they're the bee's knees and you're like, something is off. Um, I, you know, have a burning at the back of my neck when I'm around this person. My stomach is upset. I feel confused when they're around me or I feel really tired and drained. I keep thinking of them. I keep noticing them. Something is off. Don't get involved, okay? Um, avoid the I'm your new BFF person. Anyone who is overly interested in you, anyone who is um, excessively available to you early on before you've earned that time and attention and affection. Anyone who's too inquisitive about your life, run, run. Okay. A cautious person is a normal person. 
a slow mover is a healthy person, most likely. Okay. Um, avoid the oversharer. An oversharer is most likely going to end up being a codependent person. You know, is that a terrible thing to be? No, I do it. You know, I, the, I have Gemini in like six houses or whatever. You know, I over, I run my mouth. Some of us excessively communicate, you know, at times. Um, some of us also with the neurodivergent stuff, you know, or if you have another disorder, you may not know exactly where those social boundary lines are. Is it a crime? No, it's not a crime, but you know, it can signify that someone has some codependency issues, that they're needy, that they're trauma dumping, um, that they're never going to give you a chance to talk, you know, so if it is it falling in that category, just be mindful and be careful, you know, but otherwise an overshare may be an okay thing. It can actually be a lot of fun, honestly. So <laughs> I prefer those people as long as it's mutual. Um, number six, and I have to talk really quick. Okay. I got to wrap this thing up here. So I'm going to, I'm going to get a little faster. I'm going to try. Uh, number six, categorize. Okay. This is a trick that I came up with back in the day um, when I wanted to make sure if I was dealing with a bunch of people who were shady, mm, uh, I was going to protect myself from that becoming a problem in my life, but also I was a little on the fence, so I didn't want to completely exclude them, and I didn't want to be any lonelier than I already was, and I wanted to take it slow, I guess, you know, so I started putting people into categories, and you could design this any way you want. I only have three categories. Maybe you want to have five categories or six categories. Okay. But my categories are number one. I don't think so. When I feel with someone that they have an agenda, they're hustling, there's something going on, maybe not all the time, but enough of the time behind the scenes. And I don't like it. Or if I blatantly witnessed them do something wrong, I am in, they are automatically going in the, I don't think so category and they are never getting out of that category ever. Okay. Probably ever. And, um, that's okay. That means I'm not going to let them into my personal life. I will never really share much of anything with them. I'm not spending significant time with them. We could be cool with each other. You know, we could pass by, but no, I'm not investing in this. Um, and those are usually the ones that try to get into your life the hardest. Okay. Then I have category number two, which is the gray zone. Most of the people I know are in the gray zone. Um, even if they appear to be one of my friends, they are one of my friends, but they're not one of my true friends. They're a gray zone friend. So I keep most people in the gray zone. And quite frankly, I may keep people there for five, six, seven, eight, nine years longer than that. And they may never leave the gray zone. What happens with the gray zone is that you're dealing with people who you are not sure about. They often fluctuate. They are sometimes high vibrational people and sometimes they're low vibrational people. Sometimes they appear to be growing, uh, but then maybe they don't have good follow through. Or, you know, they often won't grow, but they're really cool to be around, you know. And so, you know, whatever it is, you have to just keep them there, okay? I would never promote someone from the gray zone um, just because you really like them or a conversation comes up where maybe you, you could, you know, divulge, um, and you really want to, you know, you, you have to be in control with the way you handle people in the gray zone. All right. Keep that boundary, keep it set, or you could end up getting hurt. Um, then I have my, you know, you're all good, come on in zone. Now, even in that third category, these are my people. This is uh, where I go to vent. Um, this is where I feel I could talk about most things. I would say that even with my absolute closest people, they don't know everything that's going on with me. Um I will never put myself in such a vulnerable position with another human being where I feel extremely exposed to something I need to keep safe and protected in my life. And I never stop watching them. 
Okay. That may sound sad or harsh, but I'm perfectly content with that. And there's a reason for this. Humans are fickle. Humans are nothing more than energy. You need to stop seeing people with the meat suit. You need to stop seeing people as your friends. You need to start seeing people as energy that shifts and is constantly engaging with blocks, obstacles, new situations, tests, and we don't know if they're going to pass or fail. And you can be there for them and you can love them if they're going through maybe some difficulty, but people can go dark at any time. And I have seen it happen. I've seen it happen with people I never thought in a million years it would happen to. And it is heartbreaking, um, but it can happen. And if that does occur, you still have to protect yourself. So what do you do? You take them out of the safe zone and you move them into the gray zone. Okay. Or you put them in the no zone, whatever. Doesn't mean you have to get rid of them, but I keep a watchful eye on my own self, um, knowing that I am nothing more than human and I could go dark, low level energy at any time, like anybody else and those friends that I have let in. Okay. And I'm still careful, um, with them, but yeah, I can count on them. They can count on me. And those are satisfying relationships, amazing relationships, even with boundaries being in place. Uh, number seven, you got to make yourself available. Um, and you need to find the like-minded. So when I read these ridiculous suggestions from social psychology and whatever, you know, Oh, be with the, you know, or the social, you know, the spiritual people. They're like, well, join a spiritual group. We'll join. Well, be careful because that's a lot of dark arts. You want problems that you're, it's going to take months, years to recover from. Get involved with a bunch of spiritual people. You know, who do they serve? What are they serving? What are they about? Take it easy there, you know. But then all the other suggestions from the doctors and whatnot are about like joining the gym, joining a sports group. Well, how does that say anything about who these people are? You know how many people you're going to have to sift through to find some good ones that could, you know, actually be friend worthy? Who is this kind of time? So what you should be doing is thinking about, make a list if you have to. What are your values? What are your morals? What are your ethics? Go find your people. Okay. What is within your life contract? What are you here to do? My life contract is about journalism and it's about light work. Guess what I do? I find my people. And even when I'm not looking, they find me. Okay. It's going to come together. Um, get into activism. You know, make sure you're spending time doing something powerful for the community, for the greater good with activism, volunteering, grassroots movements. Like I said earlier, if you need to start your own thing, like I found I eventually just had to do in Buffalo, right? Start your own thing, but make yourself available. Maybe you could lead something. Maybe if there aren't the right type of groups or activities where you live, you could start some of those. I was talking the other day about flow, okay? There was where people do the fire throwing and the hula hooping and all that stuff, how great that has been, I think, for the community. Um, find other people who have the same disorders as you. Like I said, I enjoy those with schizophrenia. I enjoy... Um, those who are autistic, I enjoy other people who have OCD, ADD, those who are neurodivergent. I enjoy that. I automatically look for that in my friendships because it's a given because even if we have extroverted tendencies at times, we are typically more introverted. We think the same, we act the same, you know, cut, cut through, cut through the nonsense. Don't waste too much time. Okay. Um, and I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say about that real quick. Okay. And then I really do have to go. I don't even think I'm going to be able to get to questions and comments because I have a client um, in a minute. Okay. So I'll try. Um, here's what not to do. Don't do these things. Don't be a shit talker. It's okay to gossip. I love gossiping. Like I said, I have like Gemini, like six houses, right? I love spilling the tea. The thing is, I don't do it with good people. Okay. I don't gossip about people I love. Don't talk trash about your closest friends. You're going to get gray zoned forever. People are never going to let you in if you're bad mouthing the people you're supposed to love the most. 
don't apologize a lot. You make people uncomfortable. When you interrupt the flow of conversation or activity to like apologize for who you are or what you said or what you did, go to therapy and get a handle on that the best that you can. Number three, don't share your paranoid thoughts of rejection. If you, look, I have OCD, I get it. Um, you know, if you have a tendency to think the worst, or you can have cyclical patterns of negative thought, if they tend to lean toward rejection or fear of rejection, don't be sharing that with new friends. Give them the benefit of the doubt that that's more a you problem than them. It can make things really awkward, okay? But definitely take it to therapy and get to the bottom of why you're having those paranoid thoughts. Number four, um, don't try to blend in, okay? Fly your freak flag. This has gotten me ahead in life. Just even doing this type of work, I have been willing to embarrass myself, to be weird, to be quirky. What do you care? What people think about you? Don't care. Be a freak. Allow other people to be themselves. Don't try to blend in. Don't be beige. Don't be boring. Nobody wants it. Nobody needs it. There's enough of that everywhere. Okay. It was also back at school. It was kind of that needy kid, you know, who was just like always trying to blend in. They had no personality. Don't, don't be that guy. Number five, deal with your hygiene. If you have poor hygiene issues, you're not going to be getting in with anyone. Number six, don't interrupt people unless you're from New York City. And that's just how we all talk here in New York State. We stumble over each other, but we always stay sort of on the same topic. Be careful. A lot of people find that offensive. Try not to interrupt people too much. Number seven, don't forget to check in on people, okay? Even if you just had a sort of light conversation, you know, there's not a deep friendship there. If they talked to you, if they shared with you, check back in, you know, be like, hey, how's that going? How did that end up? You know, bring it up later on in conversation. Create con continuity, okay, there, and interest. Number eight, don't be stingy, okay? I know a lot of people are stingy because they were hurt in the past, they've been betrayed, or they feel they were taken advantage of, get over it. Okay, you got to get over it and let it go. Give your love, give your affection, give your skill set, give your knowledge, share information, be there for people, give of your heart and energy. And don't worry if they pay you back or not. The universe will pay you back if they don't. Okay. Number nine, do not give unsolicited advice. Number 10, don't cross boundaries where you shouldn't be. Number 11, don't expect people to be at your beck and call. People are busy. Okay, go with the flow. Don't assume you're getting rejected. Number 12, make sure you're planning, make sure you're participating, make sure you're contributing and coordinating. Don't just expect the, your new friend to carry the weight for every social event you're going to do, okay? It's not a free ride. Um, number 13, don't bring up things that upset people, okay? Especially if like they're uh, marginalized in some way, LGBTQ, they're a person of color, uh, they've had a trauma in this area. I have dropped friends for constantly bringing up the fact that they went out and partied and drank and are smoking pot and I'm in recovery for the rest of my life. I can't do those things. I don't want to hear you bringing that up all the time. Don't bring up things that are going to upset people or that they can't participate in or that are a wound for them. Okay. In any way, be mindful about what you're sharing. If you're celebrating something about your life, but it feels to, to your friend, like you're rubbing it in their face that they lost that thing. Okay. Maybe you're not a very good friend. Be mindful. Number 14, don't center other people. Ladies, if you're centering men, you're not going to be making a lot of new girlfriends of high quality, okay? You need to let that go. Yes, we've been trained, but you have to start centering yourself. Um, for those of you that are parents, don't just center your kids in your life at all times and completely abandon who you are and what you came to earth to do, okay? You didn't come here just to be a parent. Um, just be careful. Make sure, again, sort of like staying in, in alignment with your life contract, make sure you're centering yourself or people are going to read you as being unstable and they're going to know that you're not really mm, fully developing yourself. Okay. And it's an off-putting energy. Number 18, don't stop growing, exploring, and being interesting in some way. Uh, number 19, don't complain all the time. Don't trauma dump on people and don't complain all the time. And that leads me into number 20. Don't ask your friends for advice and then not take it. They're going to drop you. They're, that gets old real quick. All right, you guys, I have to get on to my client here. Um, I'll check the comment sections later and I'll respond to you there. I hope this was helpful. Love you guys. Thanks so much. Have a great night.